happens, you know, because with this anxiety thing, you're sort of really, having, with this CPD, you're having to face that head on, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, that's the hardest bit of it all. Yeah. I mean, with a child as well. Yeah. I mean, how do you kind of get them to agree to do that and not mm. just leave? Because, I mean, yeah. it's a fight or flight. They could just disappear yeah. or just yeah. couldn't. Or homework even would provoke, would start all their anxiety and that they just can't yeah. cope. So, yeah. is there like a time limit to it, or um, because it's it's very um, confronting. It is. We we try and get the parents on board. <laughs> yeah. Um, normally, the parents come in for the end of the session. Apart from with the really you know the older teenagers um, who often come by themselves. Um, if there's parents around, we, we normally talk them through what we're doing at each stage. There's a like a 15 minute bit at the end where we bring the parents in and explain what the homework is doing, the rationale, and normally the family supports the child to do it. So it's not, although it's confrontational, we don't emphasise the pressure put on the young person. And I think after a while, if it, if it seems that, that actually they're not managing any of these experiments, not even at the, the first part of the hierarchy, then we'd have to review it. I mean, there's a review halfway through anyway. So if you're, what you're doing is you're trying all these things. You're doing the cognitive work around the thoughts. You're doing the behavioural experiments, but you're also tracking the anxiety symptoms and how far away they are from their goal. We would look at it sort of now and again anyway, and then at review, we would look at, you know, we would look at it together, normally with the parents if they're quite young as well, and just say, look, it, you know, it looks like this is not working, so, you know, we need to do, maybe think about something different. And we can also point out that actually, actually, you know, nearer to your goal than you were before. Or actually, you went up to number seven, then you <laughs> regressed back to number four. What, you know, we look at the date then, because um, it's all dated in the goal tracker. And then we might look at the session notes to find out what was going on there. And it might be that the hamsters died or some, you know, there could be a trigger of why they've regressed. It's a way of tracking things. The good thing about these measures is um, that actually, if there are any sort of discrepancies or un unexpected things in the outcomes and the ratings, it's all dated. So you can actually go back to the qualitative information that you have about that session and find out what was going on. So um, it may be that, yeah, there was a big fallout with a friend and you know they weren't able to do, they were more anxious about, about talking in front of the class because they had a big bust up with it, you know, with some people in the class. Or do you have much kind of um, sort of self-denial with them as well? Because, I mean, I yeah. can see that my, I've got a daughter with ADHD and I can see that she'd really benefit from kind of um, some sort of therapy for, mm. for dealing with her anxiety. But, but I think the problem I think I would come up against was that if I said to her, you know, um, what about this? She'd go, I don't need that. I'm, I, I'm totally normal. I'm fine. Yeah. You know, and, and yet anybody who'd met her could see that you know, yeah. the, the anxiety yeah. is a problem. Have you sort of come across? Well, we would certainly. I mean, there's denial and there's stigma as well, isn't mm. there, about coming to uh, therapy? Um, I think it's a difficult one because you've got to be on board, haven't you, for oh, this? Yes, um, yeah. So this wouldn't be the right type of therapy. I mm. think what you'd be doing is is more work around containment and maybe trying to get them to a stage where they might engage in something like this. Mm. So I wouldn't suggest something sort of head on. Um, how, do you, how do you get them to that point? Um, well, sometimes it, they don't want to come and there's not much you can do about that, unfortunately. Um, sometimes um, kids agree just to come to one session to see how it goes. If they don't like it, they don't come back. I think sometimes what can be powerful is just the education around anxiety, what it is, why people feel like that, the sorts of things that can make you anxious. And sometimes some kids just say, oh, is that why I'm feeling like that? And then they might be interested to pursue it further, and then some of those just say, OK, I know now, I can go. <laughs> so, but it is, it's a difficult one to get them to engage if they don't want to, certainly. Um, my concern is if this is so, you know, potentially effective, why is it not on offer? Mm. I suppose it is an offer, yeah. where is it not? It is. It's not like it dangling is. a carrot yeah. because, yeah. you know, Kamara's, you yeah. know, Dr. Bisha, she, she needs it, oh, but there isn't any. Mm. So, no, there is. You know, no, there is CBT. Well, she got one yeah. session with a psychologist, which was great, yeah. but... <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't know, certainly don't know the circumstances, but um, we do have CBT, but the... But how many people around the table have got children who've been through it here? I don't know. I haven't. But the, the requirement is that there has to be a mental health 
um, disorder, if you like. There has to be a recognisable diagnosis of, of something like anxiety or depression. Or, but even mm, if it hasn't know. been diagnosed, it just strikes me yeah. that there's a lot of emphasis put on to medication with ADHD, yeah. and that's great, and I fought against it a bit, but that's i am sort of made my peace with that now because mm. I can see it's not my daughter. But there seems so little help, or maybe I've just haven't been looking at it. But, and, but and again, so little support for, for, for actually the therapy side of things, which has to go yeah. hand in hand. With but the nice guidelines so, say the medication shouldn't be given until they're, they're it's normally, tried. yeah, and it's normally the root. Spark, yeah. What's going to happen? Oh, they're going to go straight to the psychiatrist yeah. to actually get the medication, but that's not what the We've medication says. Well, with young people, nice yeah. Say, but you're not off your mm. it. When a, a kid's been assessed as having ADHD, obviously there's varying levels of that, and that depends on the type of treatment you get. If the impact is huge, you know, sort of socially, emotionally, um, family, etc., they, they might in, it, that might indicate medication first because they might not be able to engage in something like this if the attention is so poor and the hyperactivity they wouldn't be able to engage so that would be the sort of higher level if you like and then there's somewhere sort of in between where they might be able to engage in therapy but may not need medication so therefore therapy should be tried mm -hmm. so it's not to say that if someone goes to medication first that they should never try therapy it just means that sometimes the medication helps to I engage in the nice therapy later. Yeah. That is not what the nice yeah. guidelines say should happen with that medication. Yeah. And also, I, my daughter doesn't have severe ADHD. Mm. I don't think she has severe ADHD. I said the anxiety was more actually. Yeah. Of a well, it's, I mean, it's certainly a discussion to have with whoever did the assessment. And, you know, if you're still concerned about anxiety, <coughs> then it's, you know, as a family, it should be raised. Mm. So I mean, would it be a GP refer or would it be... Well, if you're already open to CAMS and there's mm. already a, a doctor, then it should be talked about at a review, really. Mm. Because if it's ongoing anxiety that's not getting any better and is impacting greatly on school or home life, etc., mm. then it should be brought up in the review. Because, I mean, we do offer it. I mean, even mm. Doctors We have referred people to me that he's been doing reviews medication reviews with and then there's some people that are referred to me where parents have chose not to go down the medication route at all and wanted therapy to try and help manage um, some behaviours or wanted to try it because you know, some some kids obviously are assessed as having ADHD and it's it's a decision you make whether you want your child to go on medication or not and it may be recommended by our service but then the parent says no I'd like to try a therapy so I've had families yeah referred to me my son who has ADHD, uh, he was off medication. I said no to medication and was sent straight to Val. No, alter and I'm the therapist mm -hmm. myself, so I inquired about what else was. So, you know, it was like medication or that's it, and that's he was sure. discharged. Yeah. My son actually has ADHD and Asperger's. I'm not a great one for labels and diagnosis, despite being in the profession myself. And then you're that's sort of like, well, let's give him another diagnosis of. GAD or some kind of, I don't know, in, part, in, as, in my experience as a parent, which I think is probably shared by a lot of people, regardless of what label you stick on him, he has anxiety. Now, is Ollie predominantly Asperger's and his problems because he's autistic lead to his ADHD because that's how he manages his anxiety by running around a lot and mm. being, I don't, I, mm. I don't know, as a parent you get in this I don't care what you label him with, I just want him to be <laughs> helped to, <do> that. <laughs> to grow up, to have a decent education and to achieve what he's able to. And it just, I don't know, um, it just feels... Um, like I'll, I'll try my best to answer that. Yeah. It's a, but it's, a, it's an adapted form of CBT that you would use, which, was, which isn't the, the usual CBT that we offer. It would be an adapted form. For, for kids on the spectrum, we don't normally do adapted CBT although I am as you know I'm <laughs> someone who does had does do that but um doesn't get enough opportunity to do it but um but no the, the, I mean the CBT is recommended mainly for anxiety and mood disorder and that's its sort of evidence base if you like if it's in the context of of ASD for instance then often it tends to be m more on the sort of behavior side rather than the cognitive side so mm -hmm. it's a very adapted form and not everybody's trained in that mm -hmm. um, it's not offered in a lot of places yeah 